Hi everybody, excuse the glare and everything, the camera's different camera, so we've got different echoey sound, but we'll get through the video. We're doing a Volkswagen T4 bonnet. Now, the bonnet is in bad shape, as they all are, because they are old vehicles, the T4s are the old ones, so they're all going to be beaten and everyone's going to have sprayed every type of arsehole can on it, guaranteed in its life, unless it's had a decent spray job that someone spent some money on you're working with these sort of scenarios. All types of paint, everything. Rust, chips, dents, you name it. They're in these panels. So this is the bonnet we're working on. Now this was, in my eyes, an original AA van because it's the original color on this is yellow. So when you indicate yellow on these vans, it's just AA van straight away because they use them for getting around the country. And that's where these ones came across and people brought them cheap because the AA had them, went to the moon and back with the miles on them and then they just sort of parted ways with them and then sell them on. And then people end up buying them, toshing a bit of paint over them because they don't want it to be the bright yellow reminding everybody of the AA van. So they toshed paint, up paint over it. And this one has had some paint toshed over it in its life. Guaranteed it's like black, all sorts of aerosol goodness over this. So looking at this and just sort of going around it for a start to see what I'm dealing with. We've got typical place you get stone chips and then them stone chips don't get treated over the years. They get left and left and no one looks after the vehicle and it just starts to peel back and all this starts to chip. So that's how all this starts to create from stone chips and it just starts to rust up. So we've got this edge to deal with here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 180 DA this back to raw feather it up into this piece so we'll have a band of raw metal and then that'll be feathered up to about here along here we've got a dent we've got a raised dent here now these are a twin skin on this so i can't get to this side here so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to tap this down i'd rather this be a low spot and fill it than be a high spot and look at it and be a bump. So we're going to knock this one down, skim fill that when we've got all this cut, cut back and ground out. Then I'll feather this across and sand this back. This is all going to end up being finished sanded in 320. So that'll be finished in 320. Now the inside of this, I've done some off camera already. So that's the inside. Now, the first thing I did with this was, because this is covered in grease and crap, all that you can imagine, it's just under the engine base, a bit so splattered up. So bag this off because I don't want any of them contaminants coming off, bits of dust and crap flying around, coming up onto your work. So clean this round the edge, three inches in with panel wipe degreaser. First thing I did, clean it thoroughly all the way around that edge. And then five mil pipe, pin lined it so I did a pin line all the way around to pin line that off then masked in and then paper, papered it off and then 180 this edge just where the breakthroughs were where the chips were on these edges I've 180 that edge there and knocked this back so the first coat of primer that we're going to do when this is prepped up is going to be epoxy and we're going to do an epoxy band basically round here and that epoxy will seal back to the metal for good rust protection. Epoxy straight down, we'll drop that down. I'll do the epoxy bit over the front band that we're gonna come up with sand out. Get that down, let that go off. And then I'm just gonna 2K high build it, give it two to three coats of 2K high build. Prime it up, let the primer go off overnight. And then in the next episode, I'll have it flatted off. All I'm going to do, I'll tell you the flatting pro procedure now. Once that 2K I build primer's gone off, so it's nice and solid, I'll just come in with a block, guide coat it, I'll knock it back, I'll be just using 320. I'll go 320 and probably end it in around about an 8, up to about an 800 grit, and finish it in that. So it's nice and flat. And then we can move on to the base coats, which will be part two, and I'll take you through the base coat stages. But that's what I've done. So we've got all this prep work on here to do. Now, when it comes to that dent here, I'm basically just going to get a flat piece of bar, steel bar, a little square, 
and just tap very lightly this just so it goes down just so i don't feel that bump here when you look at it as a bump and get it as flat as i can i mean this is a very old van there's a lot of prep work to be done on this um it's a collab we do stuff so we've done the bumpers brand new set of bumpers i've painted them in nardo gray this is the color this is going we've got artwork if you've seen on the channel the dude stuff sign that i did for his studio where it's got the chicano style girl and then his logo we are reproducing that on this so it's going to be the same we're going to have the dude stuff logo here then we're going to have some chicano airbrush artwork here and it's going to be nardo gray blending into the artwork and then clear coat to finish so there's a lot of work to do on this before we even think about artwork and base coats there's like there's all this to do so we've got a, got a day to get all this sort of straightened out sorted out cleaned up so the first thing on this i'm going to do is clean it thoroughly clean this down get all the crap and grease off of it before i start sanding and smearing because you don't want to be sanding and smearing that grease and crap that's on here now and just sanding it into the underneath paint because you're just moving that contaminant about so clean it thoroughly down now and then you can start sanding on a clean surface right guys i didn't put you through the painstaking bit of sanding i mean who wants to see a time lapse of someone cursing throwing a sander across the studio bitching moaning but in a time lapse it sounded like donald duck so I didn't want to put you through that because it's just such boring and depressing and I hate it. I really do, I loathe it. That's why I try and steer clear of jobs like this. I'd rather have jobs that are, if you want me to paint something, it's clean, it's coming in the studio and I'm spending my time doing my airbrush work and clear coating. I don't want to get involved in all this because it just ruins the studio. It really does, doing all this sort of crappy prep work. So I'll turn you around now and then you'll see the actual damage that is on this bonnet when it comes to stone chips. So every circle on there guys is patches and groups of stone chips. It is absolutely caked in damage. That, that raised bit was actually a rust. When I tapped it, it just cracked and broke through, but we've still got the hard second skin underneath here. So I've cleaned all this out and then just pushed and just rather dent that in so I can skim over. So I've got a little indent now, <coughs> a little bit of filler over that, skim it, job done. So all the little circles are stone chips. It is absolutely peppered in stone chips. Some of the little ones are light. These little ones here are very light. These ones here are deep. So all the deep ones, it's all gonna get a little skim. I'm not gonna completely skim the whole bonnet People will say, yeah, just take a whole lot of skim, skim the whole lot. I'm just going to go around and spot these with minute bits of filler. I'd rather just have it slightly filled in than nothing at all because we've got eye build primer going over this and it'll be three, three coats of eye build. So the eye build will fill the, the minor ones in, but there will be a little dot of filler over each bit and just, just knock it in and then we'll sand over the top of this. 240 once that fill has gone off we'll just 240 it 320 it and then we'll smash the marble down job done get it all wrapped up ready for the next stage so that's where i've got to i've sanded all this out back to bare metal feathered up here and took a lot of this black off there was a lot of aerosol black so where there isn't stone chips it's nice and smooth so that's a nice surface, but I've just marked out where I'm going for the little bits of stone chip. All sanded down to sort of metal here where the rust was. So that's just not that. This will get epoxy sealed here. Epoxied, that'll protect the bare metal. And then we can just high build the rest over the top. Job done. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up, knock some filler up. I'll do the filler stage. And then we'll get you over to the primer stage. This video is sort of basically a talk through and then a pan round of each shot as I do it. I don't want to put time lapses in because you just see someone going mm -hmm, at high speed with a sander or mm -hmm, high speed with filler. I'd rather you just talk you through, pan you around like this, talk you through each stage so you get to see the next bit, you get to see the next bit and so on. So blow this down for starters, blow it all off with an airline panel wipe it blow it down again 
degrease it, panel white, then we'll put the filler in. See you in a bit. I've got the filler bit done. Now you can see all the bits of filler over that. He'll skim over that bit just a little over the top. And then we'll just flat this off. Just knock that back. Very minor filler this is, just a light buzz over the top. Get all this nice and flat now. Fingers crossed we've got all of them. But then I'll just build the high build up. And the high build should get them and them little ones. If there's any smaller ones, fingers crossed the high build will get. But I'll be able to see this in the guide coat stage on the next piece. If you've missed any, you've always got a chance of just touching up a bit of fine glazing filler over the top if you get any ones that are just sort of still poking through. You have got another chance of getting them as you go along. But this would be good enough for this. As I say, tidy up job on this. We're not looking for a concourse paint job going to a show. This is a tidy up job. Nice bit of artwork just to freshen up on this T4. So I'm gonna let this dry off. And then I'm gonna go in with the process of sanding this back. Just going to hit this with 240 first, buzz over the top 240, finish it up in a 320, and then we'll mix some primer up. Right guys, the last clip you've seen I was, I'd put all the filler work down. We've done that, I've sanded it down, I mixed some epoxy and I just epoxied the whole bonnet. So we've got it all in epoxy. Belts and braces, just seal all the old crap off, epoxy seal it down, job done. I can still see a few little bits where there's a few little bits where there were stone chips but, but we've got eyebuild primer going over this so where I can see these tiny little dimps the eyebuild's going to fill it on the next coat of this so I'm going to let this cure right down and then I'll go in with high build and give it two to three coats of eye build and that's basically the primer stage done it but basically the eye build's going to look like that, but a different colour. So you're going to see the same thing again. It's pointless me showing you the eye build when it's down. It's going to look like that. You're not aiming for a silky smooth finish on the primer. You're aiming for the build side of it. That's why it's a primer and it's called a high build. You're, you're aiming to get you that body of paint down. So if you get orange peel, you get orange peel. You can put these primers down. I have put them down where I've needed a real smooth coverage with it. I've just sort of thinned it down high pressure and just really put it in nice and light and build it up that way to get a smooth surface but most of the time it's for building up and filling that's the old, old idea of it so I'll finish this one here so you're going to see it in the next stage it's going to be like this but it'll be a different tone of grey probably a little bit darker in the eye build and then we'll move on to the prepping side of it because we've got to prep this again We'll have to guide coat it all, then flat all that back, clean it, tack rag it, and then you're ready for your base coat. But the base coat stage will be in the next video. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Me babbling on. Uh, not really much to see, but there isn't. I don't really want to put you through sand in and then you see me spraying primer. You can go onto any YouTube channel and see one someone see someone spray primer. It's like whoopie do, you're just like smashing a load of primer down. So the next stage will be a little bit more sort of, a little bit more involved because you're doing a bit more prep and putting your base coats down. So your base coats, you're just changing your gun settings for your base coat. It's a different mixture of paint. It's thinner than a primer. You're using a different needle and nozzle tip size and a different air cap to get you a nicer finish down. So as you progress up your coats, your guns sort of change slightly your needle and nozzles change slightly, and your air caps change slightly, and your air pressures change slightly. And that's your sort of applying process. So thanks for watching guys. Don't forget if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe, press that notification, and I'll see you in the next one.